Welcome into WMER 2 News at 6. Thanks for watching and streaming us on your favorite device. I'm Kelly Swoop with Jamie Costello. Early voting started today, and more than 218,000 mail in ballots have already been received. And we're taking a closer look at our top two gubernatorial candidates. Yeah, we sat down with the candidate for a half an hour, and today we're taking a look at what Westmore and Dan Cox have to say about education. Now, here's the thing that people want to know. Yeah. The casinos raise billions and billions of dollars supposedly going to the schools, but we still have 14 Baltimore City schools that don't have air conditioning. How is that possible? The fact that our city right now has some of the, and our state, has some of the best schools in the country, and we have schools that have to get let out at noon when it's 90 degrees is unconscionable. The fact that we have some of the best schools in the country in the state of Maryland, and we have students who cannot drink from the water fountains because of lead. It's unconscionable. And so there's, there's a few things that we have to remember in all this. Uh, you know, making sure that we are having proper funding for 21st century schools, uh, because we're sending a message every single day our students walk into a classroom, every single day our educators walk into their place of employment. We send a message about what we expect from them without us even saying a word, just by the buildings that they're walking into. We also know that we can't stop there that the expectations that we're setting for our children and how we're thinking about an entire ecosystem of support is going to matter to not just them and their families, but that is going to matter to all of us. This was what we mean when we say that in our administration, we are going to have a leave no one behind agenda. The leave no one behind agenda means that we are only going to be as great as how we are treating our most vulnerable and making sure that basic supports and supplies that our children are going to need to compete, that we have those things in place. And it's not just going to be about funding. It's about leadership, and it's about direction, and it's about accountability. I know you're not as an advocate of the CRT. Talk to me about why you feel that the critical race theory should be removed from the um, curriculum in public schools. Well, I go back to my, um, my love of Frederick Douglass and how he addressed issues of um, oppression and, and disparity through praising the founding principles that we have as a nation that bind us together. And he always focused forward. He didn't look backwards with negativity and divisiveness. He said, these are the facts. We have issues to fix. Let's fix them. And the reason we can do so is because we're Americans. We have these founding principles that say everyone is created equal. We're created, we're made in the Imago Dei. We have a sense of uh, justice, of civil authority, and of rights that can't be alienated. That means that when it comes to our civil rights, we're the greatest nation on earth, we need to move forward in that way. When you do um, schooling, you're, you're supposed to be doing reading, writing, and arithmetic. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be doing STEM technology, advancing, making sure our kids are world class in their learning and in their opportunities so they can become wealthy or go on to college or do whatever they want to do and dream big dreams. Instead, um, sadly, many times we're getting into indoctrination, we're getting into political ideology, and that just creates division. Mm -hmm. It distracts, and it then questions the student, uh, causes a question in the student as to whether they can trust the very system of government. And this, again, sets me apart from my opponent. I am a huge proponent of teaching history, all of it. That was my next question. All of it, okay. but I'm uh, opposed to being divisive and dividing one group of people against another and dividing our students and our children. Can you imagine kindergartners? I mean, my, my kindergartners love to just dress up as Spider-Man. I mean, the last thing they need is um, to be feeling like they're, um, they have a country that they can't love. And we have the greatest country on earth. We have the principles that we love, and we can continue to advance that. And I, I tend to talk to young people about this on the campaign trail. Um, I bring it up. I say, you know, as a 17-year civil rights attorney, mm -hmm. what nation on earth can you actually sue your own government and get damages? Well, you can here. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for 17 years on behalf of individuals that have been discriminated against in various capacities. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's how we have decided to try to correct wrongs, to, to bring a check and balance, and make sure our civil rights are always protected. And you don't get that everywhere else, so that's why we're a great nation. So do you think you can watch the entirety of the interviews on our YouTube channel by scanning the QR code right here on your screen. And 